Thank you for your input. I will now consult with my lawyer. Use a bitch. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Good morning, BBs. It's too early. It sure is. Oh, welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. And oh boy. Yes, Anthony. What a what a time to be alive. Yeah. Uh every day I wake up before and I open you put, Twitter. before you put on your makeup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I grab a bunch of pens like a we went two wildly diverging song directions. Yeah, I'm going there. off of yours. Okay. Um, because it's clearly the song you were quoting. That was the one. Um, and I open up Twitter and then I go, um, oh, oh, beans, oh, beans, and I close Twitter again, and I and I try to proceed with the day. And honestly, I'm not doing too well. You know, Sage. I too live in this exact same world with the exact same Twitter, and I gotta tell you, I'm. Feeling similarly. Yeah. Hey, Anthony. Yeah. Right before I pressed the like, go to the intro. Yeah. Button. I said, mm -hmm. Anthony, did you finish all your that social was, media that was sharing? Is thing you want to do? We're doing. And this? you said yes. You <laughs> lied to me. I said yeah. And then I and then I and then I finished. It's fine. You lied. You wouldn't have gone live. <laughs> yeah. But now what? we're live. What's up, BBs? Um, I don't think you should lie to me. I don't think you need to yell so early. I do. <laughs> I think that uh, I do. Every well, day I feel like waking up and yelling. <laughs> it's the most healthy way for me to do it. I get that. Uh, Sage. Yes. What's new and exciting with you? Oh, we got a lot of news this morning. Uh, let's jump right into it. Great. Uh, first of all, I want this is some very big, very big video game news. Lord of the Rings, a new Lord of the Rings mobile game. A new coming. Lord of the Rings game? EA has announced that they're making a new Lord of the Rings mobile game. Hold on, wait, what are you saying in the middle? I'm, he I'm hearing a little gap there. What's up? No, it's a new Lord of the Rings mobile game. And it's coming out uh, soon. Going into beta, uh, just right in the middle of this summer, and it's going to be very exciting. Um, we're all going to play it on our phones, and it's going to be great. Hold on, you said phones. Yeah. Aw, man. It's, Aw, beans. Aw, beans. Yeah, elec uh, uh, electronic arts, perhaps you uh, and Middle Earth and Tell me something electronic arts has done. Name one thing. Can you remind me? Anti-competitive business practices and putting Jake from State Farm into a basketball game. Oh, them. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it, I got it. Yeah. Um, so they're making a mobile game. Uh, Capital, Capital Game Studio is making it. It's going to enter limited testing beta, limited beta testing. Everything's fine. Uh, <laughs> and basically, it's, it's a collectible RPG is what they say. A collectible RPG featuring turn-based combat and a wide roster of characters, which is... So you know exactly what this game is. Which is gotcha. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's collectible gotcha. Do you have... Do you, do you have a little golem? Yeah. You could get a little golem out of the pin... Out of the gumball machine. You could get a limited edition one, too. You can he get... Sparkles. <laughs> you can get a Smeagol, which is different than the golem. Yep. He's got kinder eyes. <laughs> That's how you can tell. You know, it's like... It's like gizmo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, let me let me give the kids a more accessible reference. Yeah, give them tell them Gizmo. It's like Gremlins to Gizmo. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah, that's what I say whenever I'm surprised. I go Gremlins to Gizmo. <laughs> okay. <I'm> <laughs> uh, so they're basically just uh, just making a mobile game, and it's kind of a, it's kind of a bummer because uh, I don't know. I I don't play a lot of Lord of the Rings games. I mean, I loved Shadow of Mordor. I loved sure. Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk's Orc Killer. Sure. Uh, I did not like Shadow of More or the the second one. Okay. That where they turned it into a way too much of an RTS game. 
I'm gonna be honest, I've never played Lord of the Rings game. That's fine. Because as the internet knows, You're I've waiting. never watched all of Lord of the Rings. So she's waiting for the Gollum game. I am pretty excited for the Gollum game, I'm not gonna lie. She's waiting, she said, I will never touch a Lord of the Rings game until that very good Gollum game comes out. Give me Gollum or give me d That's what she said. She has admitted on a pillow. It. <laughs> You've uh, all heard me. I keep saying it. There's a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff coming out. Obviously, uh, with the Amazon series, we're about to hit another like Lord of the Rings. I mean, could we call it the Third Age? Huh? Huh? You haven't seen Lord of the Rings. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll say yeah. <laughs> if I'm getting to decide, sure. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So absolutely. Um. So, uh, yeah, Lord of the Rings stuff is coming out. It's going to be very good. Uh, and I don't know why EA is leading with a mobile game. I mean, I do because they're cheap and they print money. Yeah. But. Honestly, I'm surprised this doesn't already exist. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, had the mobile market been different. You know, when the movies, even even just five, six years ago, I think we probably would have gotten one. We would We would have gotten like a very, we would have gotten a very weird Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of War fucking mobile game. I'm yeah. sure if, if, if phones had been more up to it. I feel like every franchise has one of those gotcha games. Well, and that's that's the thing, right? Is like you make a good game for consoles or PC. You make a good like triple A franchise launching game. Mm hmm. And then and you milk it to mobile death. Game. Yeah, then you milk it to death with mobile. With Lord of the Rings, people already know what it is. Why bother making the good game? You can jump <laughs> Skip right Skip ahead. To Very smart, EA. Uh huh? huh? Of course, who wouldn't expect that? The people who put Jake from State Farm at a basketball game do you think he'll making be in, smart moves. Do you think he'll be in this Lord of the Rings game, Jake from State Farm? Do you think he'll be one of the heroes of Middle Earth? I think State Farm's tapped out financially after their appearance in that, that basketball game. Do you think, I don't think they can afford to go to Middle Earth. Do you think that he'll be dancing with Tom Bombadil? Yeah! She does have plans to watch Lord of the Rings soon. I do. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's fine. It's fine if you haven't seen Lord of the Rings. You don't need to see Lord of the Rings. You don't need to see anything. Just do what you want. I was always growing up a sci-fi kid. Yeah. So, uh, and, and also had access to what was within my household. Um, and having been a sci-fi kid growing up, I did miss out on a lot of early fantasy. Early for me fantasy. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. My entire early life was fantasy. In so many ways. <laughs> Is Not this just the, the early frame. life? Is this just fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Anyways, uh, in other companies weird. making weird moves and not about Anthony's weird move here, um, a huge announcement from Eve Online graced the internet. Oh, wow. In between our last show Eve and this Eve Online, one. home of some of the large space battles in video game history, mm -hmm. a, 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 trail a trailblazing game yeah. that has... Chain that is that's blurred the line between real life and sci fi fantasy so much so that uh, you can make your game into spreadsheets now. I'm sorry, you can have spreadsheets for your game because Eve Online has partnered with Excel. There's so much math in Eve Online that they've partnered with Excel to be able to translate your data directly into an Excel spreadsheet. Man, there's nothing I want to play more than a game where you export your data to CSV. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, ooh, like I just, there's nothing more fun than a game where you have to clock in and clock out because you're in a fucking corporation. They literally yeah. call them corporations. And you have to clock in and clock out for your shift defending space. Right. And then at the end of, the, at the end of your shift, you turn in your fucking forms. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Filed by Microsoft Excel. And then they followed up, Excel replied, now it's really time to strategize, strategize and make that ISK. I love it when brands talk to each other online. Now it's time to strategize. We read that there's ISKs. Fetch. Oh, yes, Anthony. <laughs> yeah. First time in the live studio audience. Pissing wolves. 
they fucking got here. Now, see, um, this has happened to me already, but I was told I wasn't allowed to tell you. How did they make it here? I thought we locked the doors. I'm never safe from the pissing wolves. Ugh. Everyone um, thought they locked the doors when the pissing wolves came for them. Now, where is the Jake from State Farm tie-in, though? <laughs> is he clearly the using next step. Excel? Is he in Eve Online? What's going on? Uh, yeah, right now they're uh, focusing on big partnerships. <laughs> right now they're focusing on really gamer forward, gamer focused yeah. first steps. Like, like, like Excel. They're like Excel spreadsheets. I can't wait until they have uh, some Notion or Airtable integration. What's so to funny to me. Bit of, just to give you a little bit of a look behind the curtain at my brain. Yeah. Of, in the future, actually, instead of chat, you'll be Slack. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you'll be talking to various people within EVE Online. They've all, they've all moved from Discord, because it's not games anymore, it's work. They've yeah. all moved from Discord to Slack. Right, they're on Slack and Zoom now. Um, what's very funny, too, at the end of this tweet, they said, crowd is loving this. I mean, honestly, direct export of data from, if I was an EVE Online player, yeah, direct export of this data would be good. Like... That's a bummer because I think it, I think it makes for a bad, boring game. But <laughs> you know, you know. Um. By the way, this isn't a full-on news story or anything, but I do want to show this tweet from with our audio Reggie Fiza May yesterday. This this motherfucker, in the, in in multiple ways. Uh, this is Reggie's tweet for Mother's Day. Now that he's not in charge of Nintendo, he do he do be spicy. He be the spiciest now. What a rude man. What an absolutely rude man to tweet that. How you Hi. feel? Hi. I'm hoping that that helps. I'm thinking maybe our gain was too loud. So if okay. we're a little quiet now, at least it should hopefully stop breaking up the audio. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. Um, this made me so mad. Yeah. I was so angry. Yeah, it was a shitty tweet. <laughs> like. It's a rude tweet. It's a rude tweet to me. Uh-huh. And especially, he went on like a he went on his press tour where he where he dunked on the Game Boy Micro. Yes, uh, and also this, so rude. And on the same press tour, he was talking about how Mother Three just didn't make good business sense to him, and he was just like, "Eh, it makes no sense. We didn't we didn't care about it." It's Boo. just like, man, eat shit, dude. Yeah, man, eat shit, dude. Man, eat shit, dude. Uh, Lee Green Griffin says, "I hope they release it only on Game Boy Micro." Me too. Yeah. Hey, listen. Here's the thing. There's an English translation made by professional translators in their free time. And you can download that GBA ROM. And guess what? If Nintendo's not going to give it to us, we've already got it. And I got it for free. I would have given you money. Hmm. Jerk. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a real jerk tweet. Unnecessary. Uh, speaking of things also that they didn't give us, we did get a, a bit of leaked gameplay of Duke Nukem Forever, the 2001 build. Yeah, we have a minute and 20 seconds of gameplay. This is from the YouTube channel Denale, uh, that has it uploaded here. They said, yes, the leak is real. No, I'm not really interested in talking about it. That is from George Broussard said, mm -hmm. uh, yes, the leak is real. No, I'm not interested in talking about it or retreading a painful past. You should heavily temper expectations. There's no real gameplay, just a smattering of barely populated test levels. And I have no knowledge of who leaked this. I mean... Okay. That's the creator of Duke Nukem speaking, who yeah. uh, really clearly has a lot of uh, feelings attached to this game. Well, you know, it it was what? It was 15, 14 years in the making, and it was shuffled between multiple publishers. It was shelved and unshelved and reshelved and taken away from him. And Yeah. You know, it's. Uh, I would imagine it, it's a pretty sore subject. Yeah. He, uh... You know, some people are like, well, uh, yeah, what a funny story um, about this thing. But 
God, this was like 12, 13 years of this guy's life trying to get this done. Yeah, that's understandable. I'm still going to show you the gameplay. Yeah, let's take a look at the gameplay. I'm going to do it with no audio. The music was a lot. It's a little much for you, you know what I mean? Again, it is just kind of barely populated levels. There's really not a ton to it, and it's very dark. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I was never a big Duke Nukem guy. I yeah. Thought, I thought the games were... were I thought Duke, and, Duke Nukem 3D at the time was mm -hmm. pretty was pretty technically interesting. Yeah. Uh, but you know we've talked we've talked before about how I just when the world went Edge Lord Grim Dark like yeah. I just didn't go with it. Right. And so Duke Nukem was kind of like eh to me. Yeah, I had some fun with Duke Nukem as a kid. Yeah. I think 2001 shooter games were better than today's shooter games. I enjoyed them more. Yeah. I am of the opinion that I'd rather play a really shitty shooter than a very detailed and <laughs> realistic shooter. Mm -hmm. uh, it became not fun for me anymore when it got very realistic. Yeah. You know? I mean, and and then also just the, you know, the ni the, the 90s action movie swagger yeah. fucking attitude. The was dialogue, just not... the settings, absolutely. Yeah, the joke is that it's about tits. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I get it. The thing that, the, the, the thing that you said could also mean your penis. I get it. Yeah. Like, it just wasn't my thing. Right. Um, but if Duke Nukem was your thing, how do you feel about this minute and 20 seconds? Do you wish you'd been able to play it? Honestly, it doesn't look that much different than what they released. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's what happens when your game starts over from scratch three times. Yeah. Um, hey. Yes. A game that we're looking forward to is that very good Gotham Knights. Oh, I can't fucking wait for Gotham Knights. I'm looking forward to Gotham Knights so much. And we were talking about how you and I wanted to play Gotham Knights co-op together. We yep. wanted to go through this campaign. Immediately a, I was like, oh, I hope that that's co-op. Uh, and, and it was, and we were like, oh, good. Let's, <laughs> we're going to be the Bat family together. Yes. Uh, but guess what, Sage? It's not just going to be you and me. Uh-huh. It's got four-player co-op. I was specifically hoping for four-player co-op on this game. Uh, I am so excited about this. Now, obviously, this is not confirmed. This is uh, people saying that it looks like it. Uh, and this is based on a PlayStation Network listing um, that claims to have it, mm -hmm. uh, since the game is not actually available yet. It was a yeah. more of a leak. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was on PSN, um, and people are saying that... Uh, People are saying it might, it's probably real. Uh, Dagger, what are you doing, bud? Dagger, please. Dagger, please. I don't think it um, supports co couch. I think it's all No, online. it's, it's right? all network co-op. It's four-player network. I think it might do, it doesn't say anything it about. It's local one it player. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't say anything about uh, two-player local. Bit of a bummer. Yeah, I bring back couch cowards. I love couch co-op so much. We say it all the time. Why, why not just two players? Why not just two players? Why not just two players on Why not just games? two players for everything? For everything. Um, but that's fine. Uh, apparently, now it's a release on the 25th of October. <gasps> so many gifts in uh, October. Perfect month. But a play test was uh, allegedly added to Steam last month, which means it could also be coming to PC. It has not been listed. No trace of it remains on Steam. Uh, but details of the app remain on Steam DB, which means it was listed. It did pop up, so whether maybe they've changed their minds, maybe they've, but I doubt it. I think they're just keeping that PC announcement under wraps. But yeah, I, I mean, look, we're gonna play it on PC if it comes out on PC. But the trouble with PC is then we gotta have two computers in one place to be the Bat Family together. Yeah, right. How if only the how do you, if only they had portable computers? If only. How would we bring two computers in one place? <laughs> It'd be so much to set up. Um, but I would like, man, I would love it if it was two-player, four-player couch co-op. Like, bring back couch co-op games. <sighs> Four people on a couch sitting next to each other with each their little corner of the screen. Man, and, and like, hey, is Nintendo really, the, is Nintendo the only company left that wants to add couch co-op to everything? It feels like, yes. How is Nintendo the only company left that wants us to hang out together and play video games? And like, I fully not banking on 
co-op. I think online co-op should absolutely also be included. And I even understand prioritizing online co-op, yeah. especially still in the times of COVID and games that were developed during COVID. But maybe let me sit on a couch with my friends and play a video game. Maybe. Maybe you could let me do that. I would like that very much. Um, In other upcoming game news, mm-hmm. the WWE has signed a deal to make an official wrestling RPG. This is very interesting. I'm not surprised. This is the natural progression. How many like famous wrestlers do you know that are super into D&D? Sure. Plenty of them. Well, and also, you know, when you think about wrestling games and their like their career modes, uh, things like that, franchise modes, I it's really only one step away. I think it's I I'm interested in knowing how it will differ mm-hmm. and how like what they're adding to it to make it more of an RPG, right? right? As opposed to just, you know, your classic fire fire pro slash WWE style stuff where it's like, okay, you made your character in the character creator, you've assigned the points to it, you've you've essentially rolled your character. Yeah. It will, you know, your character will level up as you play through matches. What else are they going to do for their RPG? Is there going to be some sort of like career mode? Is there going to be some sort of thing where like you're making alliances, you're making friends with certain wrestlers, you're making enemies out, you're making uh, enemies out of certain wrestlers. You're trying to plan like the arc of your career. Like yeah. how how much of this? Like what goes on backstage? Like are you cutting promo? Like what's what are you gonna do? I think it's a lot to do. Wrestling is already you know, playing a fantasy game. Yeah. It's right there with it. Uh, so I think that there's a lot that could be done. I see this probably most likely being lead up to big event, essentially rolling stats against enemies. Like mm-hmm. I could see it uh, having a very fun combat system. Yeah. Somebody's, somebody's saying romance options. And you know what? Romance mm-hmm. options. Think about it. Um, now, Stephanie McMahon talked about this on an earnings call. Uh, she said gaming is a priority for the company. 80% of the WWE audience identifies as gamers. Not surprised. No. Um, she touched only briefly on the RPG, saying they've signed a deal uh, in the role-playing game space that will be announced soon and says it's separate to the mainline WWE series, which means that series will continue. So this will um, this will take much more of an RPG. They're free to mess I with it as much as they want. RPG, it's just regular RPG. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, back no, out. No. <laughs> I'm back out. No, video game. This is video game. Love a video game, but also we got we've got wrestling video games. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, how is it going to? How will it differ? You know, to make it an RPG. I think I think that's the interesting the interesting take on it. I I'm I want to know what's up with it. They yeah, following that- the career for sure. Then is a very easy thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said that uh, they're going to. They they don't have much to talk about when it comes to it. It's in very early stages. Um, they also said um, that they're very happy with uh, taking the break between WWE 2K20 and 2K22. Uh, they said they really needed that break uh, because it really. Imp- they talked about how it improved and taking the break really allowed them to uh, to enhance and blah blah. What they meant was. WWE 2K20 was the most broken fucking game that was ever released. And they needed to take that year off mm-hmm. uh, to fix their broken fucking game. Um, and they said that it worked. It was a commercial and critical success. Highest Metacritic scores in franchise history. Wow. I mean, that could be, that could make it a seven. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wrestling games don't, don't do very well. But, you know. Uh, it's apparently doing good. Uh, people are like, wow, yeah, forgotten about that game. Yes, it's best to put it out of your mind. You know, it melded in my mind with the uh, with the NBA game, with the NBA 2K20, mm. that also was broken and terrible and scary. Things in 2020? The one where, the one where all that you could just teeth, it was just teeth. Yeah, I've seen the pictures. Forever. What, 2020 had some bad things? I mean, the worst, things that 20, the worst thing that 2020 had, I think we can all agree, was WWE 2K20. <laughs> Huh. <sighs> Let's talk about people being mad at Microsoft. Yeah, okay. Usually. Yeah, people are often mad at Microsoft. I mean, except for EVE Online players. Thrilled with Microsoft They're right so now. thrilled with Microsoft. Oh my they're God, like, look at them. They're like, oh my God, look at the drag coefficient of my ships. <gasps> look at all the hours that I worked. Look at that crowd. <gasps> oh my 
goodness. Uh, Xbox, uh, if you are an Xbox user, you might have had a part of the day that you were unable to do pretty much anything on Friday. Yeah. Uh, some people, it's been up to four days uh, of, of errors with uh, Xbox Live. Their online, basically their online DRM is not authenticating properly. And uh, people are just not able to buy their digital games or play their digital games. Yeah, so you're not even able to launch a lot of these games. Uh, and we've talked a lot of shit on DRMs. Yeah. And we've talked a lot of shit about the trouble that always comes along with overly invasive DRMs. <laughs> uh, and Microsoft has been downplaying this, but they are the most restrictive of the platforms when it comes to online checks. Um, they are, of course, very famously, the people who tried to go always online with the Xbox uh, and three, was it the Xbox One? They were like, it's always online. Yeah. And it doesn't, you should always be on the internet. And people were like, no. I don't like that at all. Uh, but they've been quietly trying to do it this entire time. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting is, you know, Microsoft is trying to be like, look, hey, you know, everybody does these online checks. This is just something we do to verify that people have purchased their games. But not only that, it's something that we do to, Verify that they're not cheating. They're not running modified code. They're not, you know, it's best. It's best for everyone. Um, there's an uh, there's an account called Does It Play on Twitter, and what they do is they test commercial releases to make sure they work internet free. And they say the majority of Xbox games require an online check, and they absolutely do not have them on PlayStation or Switch. Trust us, we've tested them. Woof. That's pretty rough. Look, I understand for the games, like, you know, your games where you're running an online multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. You want to jump on, you want to get on Apex. I understand the efforts you have to go to to make sure that that's a fair experience for people. That's bullshit for the games that don't have an online multiplayer function or an open online multiplayer function. Get fucked. Uh, yeah, does it play added? If the PlayStation servers go down tomorrow permanently, every single player game you own will work offline almost permanently, provided your console is working, and your account was linked before the internet went down, mm -hmm. which is how it should work. Yep. Right? I would say, I would say you could probably even remove that account Account check. link, yeah. You know what I mean? I would say that. I would. Uh, now, there's probably, they probably hook it to some sort of encryption or something, which, look, fuck you. Um, just let us, we bought the thing. Let us have the thing. Uh, so this is kind of wild. Uh, Microsoft is still trying to apparently fix it. They claimed to have fixed it already on Saturday and then people logged back on and they just like literally hadn't. <laughs> so best of luck to you wishing to play today. Uh, I hope that you are able to access. This has not been an issue for everybody, just for a large portion of players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people are uh, talking out about this, including Paris Lilly, who uh, a game journalist and also like he's hosted a few Xbox Live official events. Uh, has said, the Xbox outages have made it clear that something needs to change in their DRM policy. Games that are downloaded to my console should have a window to be offline and playable without checking in. Uh, hopefully we get clarity and a solution to avoid this issue again. I mean, even Steam, it's like, hey, authenticate through Steam. And I'm like, no. And it's <laughs> like, okay. All right. But you should soon. I'm like, We'd oh, love it if you did. It would be great if you did. And I go, no. And they go, all right, buddy. <laughs> but next, next time, though. Next, next time. time. We'll ask. Don't worry. We'll ask. We'll remember. Uh, uh, Royal Three says it made me playing St Sea of Thieves on Steam. Even yeah, because it still has to go through the Microsoft service. Right, that's, that's a bummer. That's one of the reasons we had so much trouble when we first started trying to play Sea of Thieves together. Is Was that like, it had to go through Microsoft? Yeah, yeah, it's the dual authentication and trying to find you on the different servers. Um, right. I'm gonna press this button because this wasn't showing up yike. here for a minute, and it's relevant to our next story. This is relevant to and also to our lives. This is our donation goal. Uh, we are unemployed. Thank That's you. That's how we pay for the apple juice in our cups. Thank you very much. And thank you very much. So uh, China has released some new restrictions on the internet specifically aimed thank at God. children. Thank God China's finally put some restrictions on the internet. China's just been letting people do whatever they want on the internet for too long. We've got to keep our kids safe. Uh, on Saturday, the Chinese government announced that the National Radio and Television Administration uh, was going to need to step up controls 
to stop underage users from tipping live streamers or becoming live streamers themselves without Guardian's consent. That's why it was relevant. You see, you see, I had to do the little bit, bit, a little bit. bit. Mm. So, uh, I want you to know that we have we have our Guardian's consent. Sage is my Guardian, and I'm uh -huh. her Guardian. Correct. When we you can't have get an answer you have from either of us, and you have permission, <laughs> and also no, with, with you, you. Uh, and when neither of us can get a clear answer, when we go to like an ask your father and mm -hmm. ask your other father, uh, we usually go to dad. Mm -hmm. So uh, this comes with two policy changes. What those two are is viewers under the age of eighteen will no longer be able to tip on live streams okay. at all, and anyone watching live stream content via a kid's account. We'll have all streams locked out after 10 p.m. And those responsible for creating content will need to strengthen the management of peak hours for such shows. Hmm. Now, that's the sentence that I found hmm. very, very interesting that's because we don't one. know exactly how that's going to be enforced on content creators in China in particular. Yeah, that's the... um. Yeah, the rest of it is like, up until then, I was like, no, this is a good... We should probably institute that policy. We should yeah. find a way to make sure that nobody... And then, And then it was like... Ah, and there's the China of it all. There it is. Chinese government. There it is. Of yeah. It mm -hmm. Clarify. Um, so that is definitely concerning to me because what does that mean? A lot of these people that are not making content specifically targeted at, at minors or with mm -hmm. minors in mind, how will that affect their ability to broadcast in the evenings? Um, and what does that mean? Literally saying like, need to strengthen the management of peak hours for such shows. I don't like that level of control. Yeah. Obviously, again, we are not surprised by like a too high level of control by the Chinese government, but. Yeah, uh, th that says that it's like, okay, well, if the Chinese government decides that your, that your stream is geared towards adults and you're on during a peak hour when children are mostly on, mm -hmm. are they going to tell you that you can't stream? And the answer is probably yes. Right. Um, um, these do not generally apply to YouTube and TikTok because there's a lot less access to those platforms, specifically in mm -hmm. China. Uh, these reply to more of the bigger local services to uh, like Billy Billy and Tencent's Huya and Duya mm -hmm. uh, and Duyin, which is apparently the Chinese version of TikTok, essentially. Have you seen, this is a complete digression, but have you seen, there was a wild documentary about a YouTuber who basically just like moved to China and is making millions of dollars in China. Like basically is just like, just like doing whatever they say on one of their local streaming, on one of their uh, Chinese specific streaming sites because they're getting millions and millions of dollars to do it uh, because he was a popular streamer in the States and they wanted him wow. on the platform. So like other Chinese users would, would move to the platform. And he's That's basically wild. like, he's basically like, uh, consensually trapped there now, mm -hmm. making millions of dollars. It's so weird. It's so weird. Um, that is weird. I would like to watch that documentary. That's yeah, very I'll try to find it and send it to you. But there's, it's, it's weird. The stuff that they like, they're like, oh yeah, and just say this or just say this during the stream at some point. Woof. And it's like, oh no, dude, what have you done? Uh. Anyway, this is a continued effort to crack down specifically on like video game focused content and video games itself within China. Mm -hmm. They put a freeze on even approving games that were able to be released for a long time, which was absolutely devastating to a bunch of developers. Yep. Uh, and in 2021, they limited the amount of time that kids were allowed to play video games legally, uh, which is spooky, obviously, and something that should be uh, enforced and uh, controlled by parents and not by your government. Uh, Mosh Jam, yes, it was Bart Baker, thank you. Look up- Oh, Bart Baker? Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, I know who that is. Yeah, I was like, it's somebody that was like really known. Um, it's freaking wild. Yeah, I mean, look, this is the way, in a particularly connected world, this is how, uh, this is how China makes sure mm -hmm. that their citizens only get the information that they're supposed to get and yep. only get the things that are approved. And it's uh, a spooky, scary thing. Spooky, um, scary thing. But I will say this. I see way too many minors donating to streamers. Yeah. I really do. And I, and I just think like, look, yeah, there are a lot of ways to rationalize it. But I'll tell you this. Even, even with permission, mm -hmm. 
it's a weird thing to ask for money from your parents to give to a streamer and have that be like what you do with your allowance or what you do with I just yes. don't I don't know. I mean I, I don't like that, it. Right. I think that A, that should be a responsibility of platform holders and mm -hmm. not content creators because we simply literally don't have access no. to that information. No, you know what I mean? Uh, but something like, you know, platform holders of you have to be over 18 to sign up for this account. And like kids will always lie to get around it, but they should at least try. Right. Like, yeah, that's kind of the most a platform can do is at least try. Obviously, it's a responsibility beyond that on parents and on general Internet culture. But beyond that, too, like for my niece, for instance, my mm -hmm. niece loves like Minecraft uh, YouTubers. Yeah, there's a couple of Minecraft YouTubers that she absolutely adores doing something like, hey, I want a hoodie that says the Minecraft YouTuber I really like on it. I'm like, that's a great thing that I can get you for Christmas. Yeah. It's not just tipping. Yeah. That's uh, a weird thing that kids, that's too capitalist for yeah. me. Yeah, Ink Dependence Mike says, is it weirder than using your allowance for other entertainments? Yes, I do think so. I do think so. There's a certain, I Even mean. Even a subscription is less weird for me than tipping. Yeah, the, it's. Where they get like the badges and the emotes and stuff. I think straight up tipping is like something that just should never fall into the responsibility of children. I just don't want, yeah. And I also, I just don't want to be responsible for kids making bad decisions with their money. Yeah. Or decisions that, decisions that aren't for them or decisions that they shouldn't be making you know mm -hmm. what i mean uh and and like look you can you can argue i could argue that like once a kid becomes a certain age and has like a part-time job or something once we're yes. talking about a teenager or once something, we're talking about somebody in financial independence to some extent you know that's that's a little less weird to me but also i think there is a um for two, I, maybe it's because maybe it's because i'm an older i'm an, i'm older person on the internet i'm very old for internet um that I feel like I am taking advantage of in a in a in a way, you know yeah. what I mean? Because because there is a there is a difference in there's just I don't know there's just a difference in where I am in my life where that where that kid is like yeah. what how much I know about the world how much the kid knows about the world and I would hate to think that I am somehow uh, even subconsciously taking advantage of a child absolutely financially. I mean, it's the things that we've talked about on the internet before, like. Um, my favorite fun fact of mm -hmm. the internet is uh, that the team that came in to handle marketing, which was actually a team of Scientologists for Neopets, mm -hmm. yep. uh, that put into effect a bunch of their structural settings, uh, developed and patented what they called integrated marketing at the time, which was secretly marketing to children. Yep. Undisclosed marketing to children in a way that seemed like it was just part of a game without them knowing that they were being sold to. For instance, putting a McDonald's in the main world in Neopets. Yeah. You just thought Neopets ate McDonald's. So, of course, you want to eat McDonald's as right. a kid. I, I want to eat like my Neopets. There's a, yeah, there's a McDonald's down the street. Mm -hmm. That's real. Neopets go there. Exactly. Um, but we were able to do so at the time and even able to get a patent originally on the concept of doing so. Foundationally, the idea was undisclosed marketing yeah. naturally integrated into games for children. That's I mean, what that patent was on. I mean, there's a reason why... For a long time, there were there were very stringent laws about this stuff on television, mm -hmm. uh, and very stringent laws about the way the way children's commercials could actually be shot and structured, and yep. what children's commercials were allowed to say. Mm -hmm. And there are and the thing is, these laws, a lot of these FCC laws, still only just the tiniest, most marginally, a uh, a. Uh, uh, apply to stuff on the internet like integrated ads with with YouTube or product placement in TikTok all of that stuff is regulated mm -hmm. but it's regulated to the most minor amount compared to traditional media right and what's happening is you've got a lot of corporations you know people like like Neopets and companies like that that are saying like can't do that on the internet because the internet needs to be free and they're using that sort of they're using our terms against us you know yeah. what I mean? They're like, no, if you do that, you're cracking down too much on the internet. It's like, no, the internet is evil and corporate now. Yeah. The internet is just as evil and corporate as everywhere else. And we need to figure out what, you know, what that means. And so I know as a streamer, as somebody who just does this stuff on my own, on my own time, I'm not doing that mm -hmm. to kids. Right. But I would like to know that I am providing content and entertainment in an environment that is making sure no one is doing that to kids. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a conversation that like I have on stream a lot because I do have, especially now in the like post smosh my stream, I have more underage viewers than I've ever had before. So it's important to frequently have those conversations of, hey, 
you should not feel obligated to tip. You are yep. not a more valuable member of this community if you do. It does not make, you know, it does not change your status here. It is not an obligation. It is not an expectation of you. All the BBs content is are available special. To you for free. All of you BBs are special. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. This is, don't. Do not. Uh, <laughs> do not. Uh, Sage is my guardian, and she's telling me not to. You cannot. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah. So, look, this is all stuff. I know it's kind of like, hey, kids should be able to do whatever they want with their allowance, and I agree. But we should also make sure that we're not, that we're not conditioning children to be predisposed to spend their money in a particular way. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about some very good and exciting news. The biggest story of Ooh. today, shall we? Let's talk about our new doctor. We have uh, Kuti Gatwa, who is, I mean, have you watched any of Sex Education? I have not. Honestly, he's the best part of Sex Education. Y'all, BBC. He's, he's amazing, and he is the 14th doctor. BBC knows exactly what they're doing here. Yeah. Damn! Yeah. Okay. Dude, Shooty. Shooty's the doctor. Uh, I'm so excited. This is excellent. I have seen everybody who has watched Sex Education be so excited about it for this, and that's like, it just fills my heart. Also, I, I just, I love Doctor Who. I am behind on Doctor Who, but mm -hmm. Doctor Who news will always have like a special place in my heart. Um, you're on so the new, every time. You're on the new cycle of uh, Doctor Who fan is all way behind. Uh huh. They announce a new Doctor. Catch up for the new Doctor. Watch all of the right. current Doctor. Yeah. Then be very excited. Watch the first few episodes of the new Doctor. Yeah. Fall off hard to keep up with. T right. And then catch up all at once. That's basically what everybody <sighs> does. Now, this is wild because, like, this is an out of nowhere choice. Yeah. It really is. There have been people that have been rumored to be front runners for years. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, for the last few years, we, <clears throat> we have been told that they were, they were looking for, uh, for a man of color to be the next doctor. Yeah. Um, but there were, he, this was not on the list. Our dear boy Shooty was not on the list, and Ooh. this is great. Came out of nowhere. Uh, I'm I'm very excited. This, of course, is uh, the return of also uh, Russell Davies. So, so he gets a real good fair chance too. It's gonna be good. This is this is it's another one of those new beginnings. You know what I mean? New Doctor and new showrunner is a big deal. I mean, obviously, this happened a few years ago. Uh, when Chris Chibnall uh, and Jodie Whittaker took over as showrunner and doctor. And I think, you know, currently people are not the most enthused about the Jodie Whittaker years. And I understand that. But I think, I think when we look back on these, on these years with, uh, with Chibnall and Whittaker, mm -hmm. uh, we will see it as a very, a very needed kind of reset. switch flip, reset. Yeah just tweaking and bringing the doctor back down a little bit. Yeah. Um, and we definitely got to a weird place. Yeah, grounding the stories a little bit more and uh, sort of, you know, it's very important. It's very important in the same way that I think, like, episode eight was very important for Star Wars. Yeah. You know, let's just twist it a little bit. Now, did you know. Whatever. We're, we're moving on from that. But yeah. uh, I think this is very good. I'm going to miss 13 too. I, I think she was so good. She brought such a, she brought such a wonderful energy and a yeah. friendliness and that, that, that I'm in love with and I'm amazed by everything, Uh huh. you know, which, which not supposed to be. and that's why when I look at this photo, I'm like, that's a doctor smile. Yeah. yeah. Like, of course, of course. I know a lot of people were like, this came out of left field. No one was expecting this, but also. Then you look at this picture and you're like, yeah, of but course. Al but also it's perfect. Yeah, that looks like the doctor. I mean, that's the best kind of casting, right? Is when is when you didn't expect it, you didn't know who it was going to be, and then you're like, oh, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about it. Um, he said, there aren't, there aren't quite the words to describe how I'm feeling, 
A mix of deeply honored, beyond excited, and of course a little bit scared. The role in the show means so much to so many people around the world, including myself, and each one of my incredibly people. talented predecessors has handled that unique responsibility and privilege with the utmost care. I will endeavor my utmost to do the same. Russell T. Davies is almost as iconic as the doctor himself, and being able to work with him is a dream come true. His writing is dynamic, exciting, incredibly intelligent, and fizzing with danger, an mm -hmm. actor's metaphorical playground. Yeah. Uh, I love it. And then, of course, he, he, he gave it all. With, he said, the entire team has been so welcoming, and as much as it's daunting, I'm aware I'm joining a really supportive family. Unlike the doctor, I may only have one heart, but I'm giving it all to this show. <laughs> I, love, I love you. Great. Oh, what a sweet statement. Yeah, it's very good. Um, he said, and then Russell Davies said, the future is here and it's cutie. Uh, sometimes talent walks through the door and it's so bright and bold and brilliant. I just stand back in awe and thank my lucky stars. He dazzled us, seized hold of the doctor and owned those TARDIS keys in seconds. Um, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm sure you're dying to know more, but we're ra we're rationing ourselves right now with the wonderful Jody's epic finale yet to come. But I promise you, 2023 will be spectacular. This is very exciting. Emily Green in the live studio audience said, "I've never seen Doctor Who. I wouldn't even know where to start. I was it's oh, you, okay. It's, I had scrolled the, up for a reason. That was the whole yeah. That yeah. was the whole thing. I was just scrolled up to catch up on chat. Oh yeah, it's yeah, okay. yeah. Um, all right, all good. Um." I would recommend starting at like the reboot, essentially. Uh, like I know a couple of people in chat were like, you can essentially start at any doctor because they yeah. do kind of reset. Uh, I'm a favor of starting. Uh, start with nine. I would say start with nine. Start with nine, which is which was the 2000 whatever. Was it 2006? When was it? 2006. 2006, something like that. Uh, but I would say I would say start with that. I mean, that's just when they kind of brought back the show. After... And if there's an episode you're not driving with, skip it. Yeah. 2005, thank you. After like, you know, 20 years off the air, they brought back the show. And so that's a great place to start. Uh, Christopher Eccleston uh, is divisive, but I, I liked him. I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a big fan. And Eccleston's he, not my doctor. No. But maybe my second favorite. And I mean, like, he's around for like a year. Yeah. He's around for a season and it, and it sets the groundwork for some characters that are very important. You're in and you're out. The yeah. first episode, I'm going to warn you, the first episode is straight cornball trash. Yeah, it is. It's fun. It is straight cornball trash. They find the tone eventually. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great place to start. And then, and then because, you get David Tennant. Because even then, that's 15 years a show. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like... You, I'm, I'm camp. You can skip some Capaldi. You can skip, you can skip some of... Every doctor has their episodes you can skip. Yeah. I'm going to say that. I'm, I'm of the opinion that Capaldi is the one you can skip the most of. Yeah. Uh, C. Dandino is saying cornball trash is fun. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. Uh, I like it. But, you know, be aware that there's uh, maybe maybe a trash can eats a man. I don't know in the first episode. And maybe you got to deal with that. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah. I And then, you know, if you want to dip back into the classics, certainly <laughs> there is 50 years worth of classics to dip back into. Um but don't let it overwhelm you by yeah. any means. You don't need to. You don't need to. Yeah. Uh, what everybody's like, everybody's gonna tell you you can start with Tenant, and you probably can if you really want to. But, uh, you're gonna miss some good. You're gonna miss some good moments though of I agree. that first season. I agree. I think it's a little, little bit of foundation to be set. Um, in other exciting news all over the internet today. Let's talk about Avatar Way of the Water. I know we have a few Avatar fans in the community. Avatar of the Water. Yeah, we pull it up in here so we can watch it with a little bit of audio. Avatar wa -wah -wah -wah. Um Now this is not the cool Avatar that you think it is. No, this there's is, no there's no bending. This is the this is Blue Cat Avatar. I saw Doctor Strange. Um and they played the trailer in the big 3D theater that I was in. Yeah. It was very blue. Listen, all of your favorite characters are back. Nermal. Steven. Gamora. <laughs> Roger. Name a character from Avatar. Sigourney Weaver. Dr. Sigourney Weaver. It's hyphenate. Her What's name that? is Dr. Sigourney Weaver. Um. I don't know anything. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. 
I was saying scroll down a little bit. No, yeah, I'm gonna. So. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> Goodness. It does look beautiful. I can agree with that. I just. I mean, look, yeah, was, it, nobody's saying the 3D animation in Avatar was bad. Like, that's not the thing we're saying. I think where we're at at this point, though, is it is uh, much less impressive in 2022 to make a beautiful movie. Sometimes the blue cats hook their hair or tails together, and that's how they sex. That's from the movie. Yeah. Uh, Okay. I didn't like the like cut to the industrial fucking like buildings and military. That was rough coming from the pretty nature. But I mean that's that's the that's the I know story that's of the Avatar. Story. I get it. I don't like it. No, I mean I'm not a big I'm not a big Avatar person. I'm not I think, an Avatar person. Listen, either. Avatar for me sold a lot of three D TVs. Yeah. To me. But I don't I don't know. I don't know. This whole It's also just too late for me. It's just, I can't deal with the, I even during the first one, I was like, this is really cool, I guess, except for the fact that, you know, I don't know. It's that, it's that, it's that white exceptionalist thing. It's that colonialist thing where it's like, I came in and I'm a blue cat now and that makes me the best blue cat. Yeah. Like even that just felt weird to me. It just, it was just weird. Yeah. I don't know. I it just, I can't remember. I mean, Avatar was so unremarkable to me. It's not bad. No, the story was deeply unremarkable. The visuals were remarkable. But it's like, miss me with your fucking dances with wolves shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your fucking last samurai shit. Like, I don't need it. Yeah. Uh, the movie comes out, some people are saying this movie's coming out like 10 years. I'm seeing 10 years, 12 years too late. It should have caught me a decade ago. And listen, uh, Jimmy Cameron, don't play around. He couldn't release the movie any earlier than this because he had to dunk old women into freezing water for hours at a time. He had to, listen, do you think it's easy to mistreat your actors? It's not. It takes a lot of time and hard work. As an ex-actor, I would say they make it seem easy. Listen, that's what makes them geniuses. Uh, Hurting people uh, and mistreating them is hard. Oh, okay. But they have so much work and practice at it Got that it. it makes them auteurs. Understood. Okay. Listen, um, look, I love a 3D movie, and I love when people make a movie specifically for 3D, which happens so rarely now. It's all digital conversions. Mm -hmm. So I do love that there's a new real 3D movie coming out. I just wish it was an avatar. I don't know. Nermal's my favorite character in Avatar. Garfield doesn't like Nermal. I like Nermal's um, too cute. I like Gizmo. Gizmo's the best part of Avatar. And Ripley. Yes. <laughs> yes, correct. Yes, Nord the Barbarian it. says Dances with Pissing Wolves. It was right there. We didn't see it. So you moved on from that part of our career, Anthony. You, you never you never do see it. That's the you thing with the pissing the wolves. wolves coming. Um I listen. Is this going to make a shit ton of money? You bet. Yes, absolutely. Is it going to make as much money as it should after being in production for twelve years? Probably not. No. What does that number even look like? Twelve what? years of production. I don't know. And it's not like it's not like uh, Jimmy Cam's makes them cheap. No. Jimmy Cam's builds his own. Jimmy Cam's made the IMAX. He likes it spency. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is one thing you can take away. If you learned one thing from our show, I want it to be this: Jimmy Cam's likes it spency. Tell your friends. Tell a friend. In other big budget Spency news, let's talk about Marvel. Hey, I still have not seen the wizard film. We will not be talking about Doctor Strange Multiverses of Madness, but oh my God, go see it. You can. Um, I want to go see it immediately, and I will. I promise I will. Uh, because I'll tell you what, I saw two words trending on Twitter. I'm sorry. And they were like words that had nothing to do with anything, but because my brain and because I'm just, because I'm a Marvel fan, I saw it and I went, oh, I now know everything about everything. Fuck. Fuck. I don't know if you do, honestly. 
I was caught very off guard by the movie, but that's besides the point because that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about Moon Knight. I love a Moon Knight. I have not watched Moon Knight yet. Night de la Luna. I'm very much looking forward to it. It is high on my list, yet I have not had a chance to yet. But Jeremy Slater did an interview with the direct. Jeremy Slater, of course, is the head writer on Moon Knight. Uh, and originally had said that there were potentially written two big crossovers to come into Moon Knight. Mm. Some of the things that people have loved about Moon Knight was what, that it was a self-contained story, whereas yes. most other parts of the Marvel Universe right now are a small piece of a larger story yeah. or a big piece of a larger story. But Mo Moon Knight's thing is just about, Moon Knight's, Moon Knight's whole thing is about uh, your perception of reality and your personal reality. Mm -hmm. And I think bringing in outside characters would have really messed with that because he would have been like, well, I know that character exists and is real. And yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Right. Uh, but specifically, Jeremy Slater said that he wanted uh, Kingo from the Eternals, Kamil Nanjiani's character, to make an appearance uh, mostly because he said, I'm buddies with Kamel. At one point, there was a flashback on the page that sort of showed one of uh, uh, Khonshu's avatars back in ancient Egypt, sort of dealing with Ahmet being locked away and Alexander the Great and all sure. of that stuff. I mean, and it would have been an opportunity to yeah. bring in. It makes sense to have an eternal there. Kingo. Yeah. yeah. They've been around since the dawn of time. So you could, you could, if you were doing something thousands of years ago, if you wanted to show how dangerous Ahmet mm -hmm. was. Amit tangling with an Eternal would definitely do that. Uh, but also, like, you don't need that. Yeah, they did say it ended up being cut because it just would have made the episode way too high budget. Uh, it just would have come in far over budget they, or they the show would have sacrificed somewhere else. They got that money. You know what I mean? And also, the scene sounds like it would have potentially been a very expensive scene in addition to just Kumail money. Well, because Kumail also needs his protein bars. It's Kumail is very mm -hmm. than Kumail's protein bars. Super spency. And then the scene. And then the scene. <laughs> right. Kind of spency. Yeah. I'm one of the few people who really enjoyed Eternals. I had a great time in it. Eternals uh, was fun. I don't think it's one of the best Marvel movies, but I had a damn good time watching it. It was very fun to me, yeah. and it was an interesting little side story of, like, just something that also felt contained in a way that it definitely wasn't. It was cool. Yeah. I liked that a lot. No, I... Yeah, I, I like I like little side stories. I like that I like when Marvel does something, and this comes back to what we're talking about. I like when does something that doesn't need the knowledge of thirty different shows or thirty right. different films. I mean, I know that's kind of like the fun and interesting thing about Marvel is who's gonna show up next. But also like just get a self story every I once love in a story while. that the Guardians of the Galaxy don't have to show up in, you know what I mean? Yeah, anytime you don't have to see Chris Pratt do a Michael Jackson dance in the middle of your superhero movie is a pretty good day. Um one of the things that I thought was very interesting about, I don't know if they touch on it in this interview, but um they really did mention that there is no plan for a season 2. Like it was never planned for a season 2. Yeah. There's not going to be a season 2. They're they're kind of like open to it, but like it was not ever on the books and it's to me the way that show goes and ends that tells me that they're saying that but there are plans interesting yeah i think there are at least plans i mean look maybe movie plans maybe he's maybe he shows up with some other people does some stuff, you know yeah. what i mean maybe, cross, maybe he's one of those characters that crosses over right we never got we technically never got a new hulk movie right technically yes so, like, it that's could be like I that. See. Yeah, that's what I anticipate. I mean, in the same way that WandaVision was obviously a single season. Mm -hmm. And now it's, and now it's you know, Wanda, Wanda's going to pop up wherever. Yeah. Um, and in other, one more piece of news. Shh, the most important. Listen, this is the, when I told you there was one thing to take away from this show, I lied. That's not the thing to take away from the show is that J Jimmy Cams is Spency. The thing to take away from the show is this. Natalie Portman's arms. Natalie Portman's arms. Enhance. Get out of here, Chris. Okay. Enhance. Natalie Portman's arms. Natalie Portman's arms. Natalie Portman. Very thinly built lady. Traditionally, we know this. We've seen her in things. Ripped. She put on the mass. She went and did the work. Ripped. That is, she's, she's huge, man. She's huge. Help me open a jar, Natalie Portman. Kill this spider for me, Natalie Portman. 
you know, a lot of people were like, oh my God, this photo is by Panic. And honest to God, I no, don't notice Chris there. <laughs> no, it's not. I know. Um, listen, I'm, I'm not by, so I can't speak for it, but I'm looking at that image and I'm telling you, there is one interesting thing in that image. Yeah, I just, this is not, <laughs> this is not by Panic for me personally. There's no panic involved. I no. mean, uh, there's the forever panic of do I want to be her or do I want to be stepped on by her? Yeah, the that's answer a is panic. Yes, that is its own panic. Uh, but my panic does not involve Chris Hemsworth in any capacity. No, this is like when the telltale game is like, do you want to give the mouse a cookie or do you want to strangle it with your bare hands? It's like, like oh, well, this, like I kind of know which way you, like, yeah. I know which way I'm going on this one. Uh, hello. Hi. Um, yo, drop the fitness, drop the fitness routine. Drop the, drop it. Drop me, Natalie Portman. Drop me from a high cliff. <laughs> Drop me like I'm a Tekken character and you're my dad. Fucking throw me off a mountain. Yeah, I think Emily Green sums it up very well. Respectfully, she can choke me. Respectfully. I think Ben Jack earlier as well was like, she could choke me and I'd say thank you. Uh, Res strangle me and I'd say thank you was respectfully. it. Respectfully. Natalie Portman, respectfully. How do you go from the black swan to that? That's, that's, that's like Dwayne Johnson level dedication. What is she doing? Taika YTT also revealed that uh, Jane Foster's return will be, quote, a real mind fuck for Thor. Of course. Thor does not process his emotions. We know this. Thor did not take that break up well. He did not. He was in denial for what? Two phases? It was two phases of denial? I mean, like, come on. This is going to be great. Uh, this is going to be great. I guess there's more news. Uh, I guess. I guess there's more news. You I know what? Guess. While we're at it, let's talk about this Tifa statue. Okay. This is a $730 Tifa statue. All right. What is that? A Spider Woman cover? Uh, it's, <laughs> uh, this is Tifa doing the Jacko pose. Now, that is, now listen, is she, is she straddling the Buster Sword? Yes, she is. Okay. So this is a subtle collectible for uh for classy people then. Yes, it is. Um, I saw this statue and <laughs> I had to do a bit of digging. Uh, I was trying to understand why this is happening to us, what it is necessarily that's happening to all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, who's going to pay seven hundred and thirty dollars oh, for it? We know who's paying seven hundred and thirty dollars. There are a lot of I know a lot of people with a lot of things on their shelves that are going to pay for that. Uh, people are also considering whether or not this is her uh, twerking on Zach's grave. I love that. I love that bit of fiction. Yes, she's twerking on Zach's grave. The location of the sword seems incredibly dangerous to me. Now, it does look like. Blunt edge is turned towards her. Still not going. I mean, it's not still great. Still not good. It's not great. Uh, no, it's not great. Thankfully, somebody removed the materia before they put that sword there. I just, you know, Final Fantasy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And Final Fantasy fans. You know what I mean? I mean, all fans. All fans. All fans. There's a segment of all fans, but... I mean, the Jack O pose is something that most characters have fan art in at some point. Jack O is a character from Guilty Gear, um, and this was a pose that that character actually did in Guilty Gear because it's fucking Guilty Gear. Mm -hmm. um, and now it has become like a fan art thing for people to draw characters in this specific pose. The Jack O pose mm -hmm. has become infamous. So it was only a matter of time until it was Tifa's turn. Sure. Only a matter of time. Here's, man, here's the thing. It's weird to me because, like, if you say there's going to be a Final Fantasy statue and it's going to look like that, I immediately go, oh, it's going to be Tifa. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's really weird when characters are created just to be put in those positions. A perfect example. A perfect example. Well, listen. This I mean, we, this is what we wanted. That character was created was, just to be put in that position. That character was created purely they, for fan service. Do you That's think they gave sex. Waluigi legs like that without that in mind? Look, respectfully, 
respectfully? Honestly, I am looking disrespectfully. You know what? That's fair. Disrespectfully? Waluigi, call me. No, with Wario, it's different. <laughs> with Wario, it's different. That's like if they had made this Jacko, this, this Jacko statue with, uh, with Aerith. You can't do that with Aerith. No, no, it does feel wrong. That's what Tifa's for. That's the, that's the thinking that I'm talking about, where it's like it's weird. Mm -hmm. this, this like late 90s, particularly late 90s, early 2000s video game thing of like, this character is created for, for the fan service. How do you feel about this one? Now, any other Robotnik... I would say no, but Saturday AM, Sat AM, Sonic, Robotnik, yes, yes to that. This is like when they, this is like the Hawkeye thing mm -hmm. when we were doing when when artists were doing Hawkeye in women's poses. Yes, this, which by the way, this is this is the Spider Woman cover that it immediately made me thought think of. I think yeah. we talked about this. Fuck this cover. Jesus fucking Christ! It's not even like. The thing that wild me that that like wowed me about that cover is I don't even think it's particularly well drawn. No, I think that fucking sucks. I, I think proportionally it makes no goddamn sense. It makes no sense, and the line work is bad, and the coloring is bad, and it's bad. Um, <sighs> anyway, a seven hundred dollar twerking. This is a very specific audience, but I'll tell you what, they're gonna sell out if they didn't already. <sighs> I know. They're gonna sell out of that statue. I know that they are. I just don't want that to be the case <sighs> these are listen people people who have shelves full of kodo statues are gonna fucking buy that up they're gonna buy that up now it comes in in four different it apparently comes in four different uh flavors pardon ah yes standard advanced with exchangeable nude body advanced with exchangeable battle nude body and advanced with two exchangeable body. S nude. So you can, you basically swap out this statue for nude one. That shouldn't be allowed. Is there? I don't think that should be allowed. That's fucking wild to me. <sighs> that is fucking wild to me. I don't think that should be allowed. I don't know. Like, they don't even have, like, listen, they don't, they, they don't even show it because they're just like, we're embarrassed. You should be. We're embarrassed. Favorite GK should be pretty embarrassed. Uh, let's talk about some good news about some bad news. Okay. It's a balance, as all things are. Uh, the bad news is uh, the world is actively waging war on my body. Um, That's the good bad news, news is that uh, Double Fine is the second large gaming company to come out in support of reproductive health and we healthcare as a human right. We love our friends at Double Fine. They're wonderful people. I care about them very much, and I love that they did this. They said, we at Double Fine Productions stand steadfast in our support of essential healthcare rights for all. Um, we firmly believe that a decision to overturn Roe v. Wade would deny people their human rights and directly impact the lives, freedoms, and choices of everyone in this country. For those who are able, we encourage donating to an organization that will stand up for these rights. I love this. I love this, and I love Double Fine. Thank you, Double Fine. Obviously, Double Fine, uh, if you are not familiar, is the team behind Psychonauts, uh, mm -hmm. most notably, and a bunch of other absolutely lovely games. But... This is a big deal, and I don't know if enough people that are outside of the affected group understand how impactful and meaningful this is for us, especially in a community of gaming that is male-dominated and continually oppressive towards um, uh, people who can get pregnant. I mean, the fact that we're now, you know, we're, it's a week later, and we've heard from Bungie and Double Fine. That's it. That's it. We can count those. We can count the studios on our fingers, on two of our fingers. Um, I would really, really love to see more larger companies standing up for this. And um, it's very interesting because there is a point where an issue crosses into enough mainstream popularity, even if it doesn't become bipartisan and it mm -hmm. is still most definitely a progressive, I'm going to do real quotation marks on that stance in the eyes of Republicans. Mm -hmm. um, there is a point where it becomes 
an expectation and obligation of companies to say something. Um, there's something where, you know, uh, it became comfortable for companies to stand up against Don't Say Gay, for instance, right? Yeah. And that was kind of like, it becomes a safe bet at a certain company, uh, at, at a certain point for companies to say something and almost safer than not saying something. Uh, Black Lives Matter is an excellent example of where companies needed to make a statement. Um, yeah. I am surprised that this is not moving faster in the direction of companies standing up. Uh, even out of just like social obligation, even if they don't really fucking mean it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's something that we talked about uh, the other day where it's like, you know, we know when companies are making perfunctory statements. Right. We know when they're doing it. It happens every year around Pride. It happens look, every year around internet, uh, uh, around Black rather. History Month. Right. But like, this... The, the, and it's because they feel safe. It's because it's a social norm to do it. It's because as a company, they look at it and they go, oh, this actually, we looked at the way this makes us look on the books and focus yep. group testing says that it's actually better than it is, you know, than, than the amount of backlash we'll get from the worst people. This is not one of those situations. Uh, abortion and reproductive rights in America are one of those things where honestly, because of what a fucking puritanical uh, Protestant country we are at our core at our roots this is a situation that people feel like they have to be silent on in order to be uh accepted and they have to be silent on it in order to uh to make their way through polite company and it's time for this it's time for this to change and so that's why seeing bungie and seeing double fine say something like this is huge is because this is not some focus group thing. This is a thing right now where every company, somebody at every company is sitting and screaming, we need to post something, this isn't right. And there is a whole team of people going, well, we're looking at spreadsheets and numbers and we don't know if it's right to say it, so let's Which hold on. does not track because the majority of Americans believe that is an access and a healthcare and a human right. Uh, the majority, and from polling, from voting, from everything, the majority of Americans believe that access to abortion is health care and that women should have a choice and that people who can get pregnant should have a choice. People are afraid of the backlash that they will receive. People are afraid of uh, a very vocal fringe that will go on the attack if you say something like this. And mm -hmm. it's it's nice to see companies like Bungie and Double Fine say we're not going to be bullied. We're not going to be shamed. Yes. We're going to say what every, but we're going to say what the majority of people believe. I agree with uh, Dopapo said, uh, fuck politeness when it comes to uh, people's safety and a right to bodily autonomy. I agree. I think these other companies are fucking cowards. I think these are absolute cowards and this is ridiculous. Yep. I think that is absolutely astounding that more companies aren't saying something. This is so massive. And I think every day to wake up and see people treating it like it isn't a literal war on our bodies is what makes part of this also so exhausting. The just simple failure to recognize how big this is, uh, it, it, it feels like being gaslit by the media every single day. When the trending topics are about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, instead of about this, it is exhausting to go on with your day and care about anything else. The people are just showing up and going to work every day while this is happening. It is horrifying and it is unbelievable. And companies should be saying something. And whether those are hollow statements and they don't do anything and they don't give any money. Statements matter. Yeah. And I would rather have that than nothing. The, the, the biggest thing time. right now is, is just to get this, get this to be something people can actually talk about. Get this to be something that people can actually express and get this to be something where people feel like they can share their opinion on without being, without being attacked and without being shamed. Uh, particularly because this is something that most people believe in. Uh, so it's huge. I mean, and meanwhile, I fucking love shit like this. This guy got, Bill Crystal got fucking dunked on yesterday because he deserves it every time he says something. But also, uh, there's, oh God. that's the wrong image to put up during that. Thanks, <sighs> NDI. Uh, Bill Crystal says, please don't protest at people's homes. Please don't intrude on people attending their houses of worship. Organize politically, be civil, be civil civically. Fuck, fuck your you. civil shit. Hey, please do put your head in the toilet and flush. Hey, fuck being civil. Protest outside of people's homes. I saw an excellent tweet the other day 
Uh, I'm going to pull that up right now. And it says, uh, if you want people not to protest or demonstrate outside of your house, have you considered not being ontologically evil? Hey, you remember when the, uh, you remember when American courts struck down unilaterally, uh, the idea of a buffer zone outside of reproductive health centers right? to simply keep angry protesters away from women who have a right to privacy and have in their, in their medical health. Uh, the, the court said, Oh no, we don't need a buffer zone. Let these people scream and yell and be right in front of their faces. You voted for this. How about this tweet? You voted for this. And so now if people want to show up outside of your house, Bill Kavanaugh, that fucker, that, that fucker had people protesting outside of his house mm -hmm. and people were like, well, what about his neighbors? And somebody screamed out, we are his neighbors. We organized this. We know what this motherfucker's doing. Colleen on Twitter said, when I was 16, I was getting my first birth control prescription at Planned Parenthood and a group of grown men yelled at me on my way about how I, how I was killing babies. So I think it's fine if Justice Kavanaugh faces the same treatment outside of his house right now. Let's women face this every day and just literally going to Planned Parenthood for anything for cancer screenings that Planned Parenthood provides. There are entire organizations that have to volunteer to escort people to and from their car just to get into Planned Parenthood and out of Planned Parenthood safely. It's with a fundamental misunderstanding of the healthcare that Planned Parenthood provides, beyond the fundamental misunderstanding of what healthcare is. Now, it's important to note also that People are like, well, you know, this isn't this isn't a real thing yet, and it doesn't mean what you think it means, and blah blah blah. No, we are watching all of these states fall into lockstep and start trying to pass some very very scary things, uh, including tracking women, tracking women just to be sure that they don't go over state lines to get an abortion. So they will track women as they're coming out of a of a Planned Parenthood. We're also seeing states looking at unilaterally making IUDs illegal. Unilaterally birth making, control. Making birth control illegal. Prophylactics, condoms. People want to make the use of condoms illegal in certain states. These are laws that are being written up right now and being voted on because of this one decision. This is a domino effect that they were waiting for. And so if we show up outside your house with our signs and we exercise our rights to peacefully protest, you have to fucking deal with the repercussions of your actions. I am a uh, team guillotine, um, <laughs> but that's besides the point right now. Uh, I know a lot of people are shocked to hear that. And here's what I will say. The bills that are being put forward and being voted on, things like banning birth control probably won't happen right now. The fact that there are enough people that hate us so fucking much that these are even bills that are being put in is terrifying because this is the long game and this is the long game that they were playing to lead up to abortion. So it might take years to get something like that passed, but they will work on it every fucking day because they hate us so much. The amount of passion that they feel for taking away our rights, we have to double in protecting them in every single fucking way. And that means protesting. And that does mean showing up outside of people's houses. And that does make making them feel maybe a little bit fucking unsafe to try and impose that upon us. I don't think that they should feel safe taking away my rights. Personally, I think that you should feel unsafe if you're going to impose that upon me. I think that maybe going home should be an unpleasant thing for you. You should, you should be reminded, you should have to think of, you should have to think about the repercussions of your actions. You should not be able to sit in a room with seven other people or six other people that feel pretty much the same way you do and then go home to your family that feels the same way you do and sit in a in a removed bubble from what people actually want. You have to see the people that you're affecting and you have to understand the people that you're affecting and the way that you're affecting them. Um, and yeah, Sefrin is saying, I've been expecting my right to get married being taken away every year since 2016. And that's the thing. People are looking at that again, if too. If they're looking at, well, this doesn't have, for instance, a, uh, you know, good enough history to be constitutional, right? If you don't think that things like gay marriage are up next, they absolutely are. I don't know how to convince people that aren't worried enough already about our rights being taken away, but things are next. There yeah. are, this is a, this is, as Anthony said, a domino effect, but things that affect you are next. If this one doesn't, I promise the next one probably will. If you're somebody who watches a show like yeah. this. Yes, there, Obergefell is, 
there's a reason Obergefell was was specifically name checked in that in that brief. There's yes, they can why, absolutely do that. There's a reason they name checked it. They are starting to put these things out there. They're starting to float these ideas. Uh, and so, listen. Exactly. They have you been trying to, be, to repeal it. You need to be uh, you need to be protesting and you need to be even if you're even if you live in a state like we live in, in California, mm-hmm. where our governor came out and said, look, I'm going to make this I'm going to make this part of the state constitution if they won't make it part of national right. law. That's fine. We still need to be calling our reps and being like, well, what are you doing when you go to work every day to convince other reps? And what are you doing to make sure that this does not spread and that this gets stopped? Exactly. This is your notification that anything that is solidified by a Supreme Court ruling is no longer protected or safe. When it comes to things like tracking people in particular, um, they already do track us. They already have that information. It's what they can do with it next because they are not only making abortion illegal, they are criminalizing it. There are states that are pushing forward to make it a felony, to make it murder charges if a woman has an abortion or even in some cases a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, they are already tracking us. All they will have is the ability to use that information differently now because they say that they are tracking tracking a manslaughter charge. It's wild. Like it's 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 just wild that when when you pin people down who support these things and you ask them basic questions about reproductive needs and reproductive health, um, they don't know the answers. Right. They don't know the answers. They don't understand that. Uh, they don't understand what an ectopic pregnancy is. They don't understand uh, what what complications of pregnancy can do. They don't understand. Uh, they're just like, well, that's the way it's supposed to work. And it's like, no, it's not the way it's supposed to work. It's not the way it's supposed to work. And just because you refuse to educate yourself doesn't mean that you have to pull the rest of us into stupidity and darkness. Um, so also we're going to do the same thing that we always do when we talk about stuff like this, go to news sources and follow real news. Mm -hmm. We are, we follow this one a lot more than we follow a lot of the other stuff that we're talking about. We're pretty up on it, but definitely you want to go and see actual day to day what's going on politically from actual political news sources, vetted sources, find out what's happening in your area, and definitely listen to more people than uh, than the video game than the video games news show that talks about pissing wolves. Uh, but you know, maybe listen to us a little bit on this one. Uh, and that's all we have time for today. That's all we have time for today. We're not bringing it back up from that. No, if you're that's feeling where uncomfortable, we're so am I. <laughs> uh, we love you very much. Thank you for also uh, providing us with a platform where we get to share these kind of things. Um, I know a lot of the time when we speak to this community in particular, we are preaching to a choir. I also know that we have a lot of international viewers that this doesn't directly impact. Mm-hmm. Um, but also we know that these things spread. Uh, we know that unfortunately America is insidious in a lot of ways that is contagious. Um, so we thank also you know for that listening maybe anyways. Some of you uh, would be... Would- we are from countries that are much better than this and would be open to a marriage of convenience with one or both of us to get us over there legally, if that's true. Uh, Iceland, uh, give me a call, particularly, you know what I mean? Like, hit me up if any of you are from there and you're looking for a, 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 legal, a legal partner. Uh, but other than that, uh, th- th- thank you for listening. <laughs> Truly, we love and appreciate you very, very much. I also think that sometimes for me, just having the conversation, even when it is into a bit of an echo chamber with it, um, it makes me feel uh, like a little less gaslit by the news every yeah. day. Uh, a lot of people just showing up and having normal days uh, can be exhausting. We have to. We literally have to go to work and we have to do all of these things. Yesterday, I, partic- uh, I participated in the women's protest, the women's mm-hmm. strike. Rather, um, uh, there was a call that I don't think was particularly largely organized or didn't get necessarily the reach we were hoping for, but not participating in the economy at all. Yesterday was something I was participating Mm -hmm. in. I hope there's a larger version of that to come soon um, because just getting up and pretending everything is normal is too hard. Yeah, and you know, just, you know, talking about, you know, preaching to the choir in these echo chambers, you know, we were just talking about the echo chamber that these, that these justices and these government officials uh, basically live in you know 
yes, we are talking to an echo chamber. We are, we are sort of preaching to the choir. But one of the things that that does, and we see it with, you know, with, with things like this, it's, it's, it helps us to keep each other fired up and remind us that action needs to be taken. Yeah. You know, if, if the wrong side is doing that as well, is constantly hyping each other up and making sure that they're focused on making this stuff happen, mm -hmm. then we need to be just as fired up and we need to be just as focused because it reminds us that there are actions that we can take every day as well. Uh, Shy Town SC also said May 14th, protests all around the U.S. That is correct. Uh, so that is next Saturday, May 14th. There will be protests uh, all around the United States for uh, health care and uh, people's right to choose. Um, we love you all very much. Take care of yourselves, um, and we will see you again on Wednesday. Love you, BBs.